So growing up, our parents always asked all of us questions, right? How was school? Do you have homework today? Well, most of my childhood revolved around one question that my dad asked me every single day for years. When I was a kid, whenever me and my dad were in public, whether it was an airport or a restaurant or in the park, he would point at certain people and he would look at me and say, okay, Taylor, are they a leader or a follower? He would probably ask me that two times a day, every single day, and every single time he would expect an incredibly detailed answer. When they looked like a leader, I would say, okay, they shook my hand firm, they looked me in the eyes, they talked right to me, they were focused, they gave me their undivided attention. I had to give them an essay as to why this person was a leader. He really wanted me to recognize traits within people so that I could also recognize those traits within myself. And at home, he taught me the different leadership styles, he taught me the four temperaments. I knew all of that by the time I was eight years old. And to take it even further, every week in front of like 400 people at church, he would make me get up and sing that Bible song, you know, like Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I still know it, can't sing, but still know the song. He also wanted me to perform in plays, and I knew everybody's lines, not just mine. I also had to do the spelling bee every single year. He wanted me to be comfortable in front of crowds because he didn't want me to be afraid of people. He did not want me to fear anybody because he thought that that was the one thing that separated leaders from followers. So when I was young, I would always try to emulate what I perceived to be the outward traits of leaders. I stood up straight. I look people in the eyes. I'm kind to everyone. I remember the little things about everybody that I meet. And what I learned early with all this training, it gave me a very helpful framework for viewing the world and the people that are in it. And then every single night, this was the hard part, he would turn the question on me. Before I went to bed, he would look at me and say, Taylor, today, were you a leader or a follower? Now, in order to understand this question, you need to know a little bit about my dear dad. My dad is a lot of things. Besides just being my superhero, he was an athlete. He was a running back at the University of Illinois. I know there was someone in here that went to Illinois because they were talking to me. So ILL, give it back to me. You're supposed to say I and I. There we go, I and I. He was an athlete. He is still the third leading rusher in Illinois football history, still third in career rushing touchdowns. He held the rushing record every year he was in school before going to have a cup of coffee with the Vikings. And a lot of people in my family have been immensely successful in sports. My uncle is a Hall of Famer with the Cardinals, Lou Brock. My other uncle is Marv Woodson. But I came to the realization very early that I wasn't going to be an athlete. I'm not Serena Williams, and trust me when I say I try, but I did not give them those photos to spare myself the embarrassment. But I love the game, and I always have. So I said, what am I going to do that allows me to enter into this space? And the answer was broadcast journalism with a very specific concentration and in interviewing others. And in college, I used this question, Taylor, are you a follower or are you a leader? And I use it to my advantage, and my answer was that I did not want to be a follower. Now, my professors were telling me that the way you go is you work your way up through local markets, but I just knew in my heart that I did not belong in Des Moines, Iowa. I just couldn't be there. So I busted my ass. All I did in college was work, and my first job ever ended up being in Chicago, the number three market in the country at a national network with the Big Ten Network. So to me, my dad is such a leader, the way that he has led me and my sister and just the people around him. But when I was about 18, I had a bit of a realization about my dad. So you know, initially, we kind of see our parents like superheroes, right? Like they can do no wrong. And for everybody, there kind of comes this time in your life when you realize that your parents aren't perfect. And for me, that time came when my parents got divorced. And it happened because my dad cheated on my mom. When I was writing this story, I was thinking, you know, should I use the word like infidelity? But I thought, why make something so bad sound so pretty? So my dad cheated on my mom, and to spare you the details, it was the kind of cheating that you don't really forgive. So I had to have a really, really hard conversation with him. You know, you have done all these things that you say people should never do. And so I have to look at my dad and ask him why he wasn't being a leader. The same question that he was asking me, I had to say, why aren't you living up to your own ideals? And I think that 
a lot of things in my dad's life are reasons why he wanted to make sure I knew the difference between a leader and a follower. It was hard for my dad, I think, when he stopped playing football. He went from being the best in college to the NFL where everyone is the best. And I think that when you have been the best at something for so long and you realize that's not what you're going to be the best at anymore, you think that's it. And it takes you a minute to understand what else you can do to impact the world. And he wondered how you could be a leader if it wasn't on a football field. And he was asking me a question every day that he probably asked himself every single day, multiple times a day. He wanted me to understand people so that I knew how to be one of the best in any situation and not just one situation. My dad had to learn tough lessons about leadership through failure. Whether it was football or love or life, all lessons that he unknowingly bestowed upon me. And then he taught me that, you know, when someone you love betrays you, it doesn't really matter how often they look in your eye or if they stand up straight. He taught me that leadership is not about handle, how you handle the wins, but more how you handle the losses. That most of the time, being a leader isn't about saying yes, it's actually about saying no. And it's not about how you make people listen, but how you make people feel. And most importantly, it's not about being a great man. It's really just about being a good one. So my dad and I are close today, always have been, always will be. And this leadership question now goes both ways and it holds us both to an incredibly high standard. I keep this picture on my bookshelf in my little New York apartment and it serves as a daily reminder to put into action all of the things that he's taught me, all the things that he's shown me to do. So I want to end with a leader that I have always looked to, the one and only Serena Williams. I truly adore her. Um, I watched her documentary, Being Serena, on HBO more times than I can count. And in one scene, she had finished a workout with her coach, Patrick, and it wasn't her best workout. So during the cool down, he looks at her and says, tomorrow you give everything. She got annoyed and looked at him and goes, what do you mean, I always give everything? He stares and says, no. Don't talk to me about the past. I'm talking about tomorrow. And that has always stuck with me. I love my dad more than life, and I thank him for teaching me so many things and for always asking me that question, Taylor, today were you a leader or a follower? But what I realized is he never asked me which one I was going to be, which one I was going to choose to be when I woke up. And I've learned that that's the most important question of them all, that it doesn't really matter if I was a leader today, it matters that I consistently make that decision to be a leader tomorrow. So, here is to all the leaders, to all of our dads, and to my dad. Thank you.